What's up guys, one of my best friends, Ben Haggerty, AKA Ben Real vs. World, just got a YouTube channel. He's an incredible video editor. He just got off of being Schoolboy Q's lead videographer for his tour. Um, you have got to check his stuff out. I've been asking him to put his videos up on YouTube and start doing tutorials and all that stuff for like a year now and he finally just started doing it. What's up guys, Josh here. Corey here. We are here in the Iron Well production offices out here in Orange County. Like we kind of spend most of our time these days, I think. All the time now. It's crazy. We've been working on a series of projects with the entire team, but we wanted to share with you guys a specific, really cool tool that we use called the Feather Mask Tool in After Effects. It's incredible. What it does is it allows us to do something called the variable masking. It's crazy. Usually when you have a layer that you want to mask, say a, we're gonna just take a circle. Say we have a circle that's been cut out of a, you know, entire layer and you want to feather that circle. Usually the only option is to do a continuous feather around the entire circle. But what if you wanna vary the amount of feather that is around the edges of that circle? Well, you can do that using the feathering mask tool. So we actually use this tool in a really interesting way in a project that we did with a bunch of um, drinks um, and really cool falling food items that um, I'd like to show you guys. So check this out. Now I've got to shout out my man JR Strickland. He is an incredible VFX artist that actually taught me how to use this tool. All right, guys, as you can see, we're in After Effects. You can see that you have a bunch of grapes being rained down upon with a lot of water. The one thing we're going to do is we're going to actually hide these edges and we're going to use that using masking and we're going to perfect it using um, the feather mask tool that we learned about before. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this by doing Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. And then I'm going to go over to my pen tool and actually draw a quick mask above the edge of the table. So everything, so this layer is now only being seen within this mask and everything else you see is actually the bottom layer right here. So I'm now gonna, now I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna go click into this masked layer, go to transform, position, and actually bring this layer down so that it's actually covering the edge of the table. So that almost solves the problem, right? But the issue is that this layer has a really awkward edge. You can still see a very awkward edge between this mask and this table. So we haven't really solved the issue yet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at this mask. We're gonna go into the mask, mask one, and we're gonna take a, a good look at it. Now we could adjust this mask and kind of move it around. And we still kind of deal with the same issue. We have a really hard edge. So usually what you do is you go to feather, mask feather, and you would feather it. And you would keep feathering it. And the thing about feathering masks is you have the issue that sometimes you have um, the ability to feather a mask as much as you want on the other sides, but you have a really awkward situation here with the grapes where you actually would like the mask to um, be feathered more, but the more that you feather it, the more that you actually see the mask creeping on the grapes. If I were to actually turn the entire layer on and off, you can see that these grapes actually get dark and we don't want any of this um, layer to be on the grapes via this feathering that we're doing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring the feather down and we're going to use the mask feather tool. Now take a look at what this does. We're gonna bring, we're gonna create a bunch of points and this is actually going to allow us to vary the intensity of the feather depending on where we are on the edge of the mask. So usually you're only able to control the mask feather all at once. So everything is gonna be feathered at the same intensity all across the perimeter. But as you can see here, we can actually use these feather mask tool um, points to actually give you a variable amount of feather. So when we go around the edges of the grape, we'll be like, you know what? I actually only want to feather a little bit. I don't want the feather to be crazy because if I were to feather the crazy, if I were to feather a lot, then the 
feather would be visible on the grapes and it would block out the visibility of the grapes. But say everywhere else, you actually would like the feather to extend a little bit further. So we're gonna click off and see how this looks. This looks interesting, okay. Okay, this is looking actually pretty good. Press spacebar to select the hand tool. Um, and I would say guys that this looks actually pretty nice. We're gonna click on, see that what this looks like. And we're gonna actually adjust these. So we want, I'm gonna actually use the benefit of not being able to feather a ton to adjust the feather right here. And I actually might want to create another point here. There you go. So now as you can see, it's click off. Almost there, there's a little weird section right here where we actually may want to feather it a little bit more. Let's click off and click on so we can control one point. Click off to see how this looks. This looks pretty good. Corey, what do you think? Looks pretty good. Looks all right. I wanted you guys to see exactly what we did. So basically, we were like, we're gonna feather, let me undo that. Basically, I said, we're going to feather a lot on this side, and we're gonna feather a lot less on this side. Because we wanna feather enough so that over here, the edge is being covered. But we don't wanna feather too much on this side because we don't want to have this layer, this dark layer, um, encroach on the grapes and start tinting the grapes dark. Cool. Thanks so much for watching, guys. The question that I always get is, how do you get your footage from your computer to your phone to say upload on Instagram without losing that quality? Well, one thing that you gotta do is you gotta make it.